Vita Guerra, and you're living the low life. Today on Living the Low Life, it's the top guys. If they don't think I'm doing a good job, they can whoever wants to step to the plate. We'll learn it all from those who have been honored. That's the number one thing my dad taught us, to do things right or don't do it. It's the Lowrider Hall of Fame. That whatever award I've gotten and I've been selected, I earned it. Today we'll be looking into the Lowrider Hall of Fame. Created by Lowrider Magazine, the Hall of Fame celebrates the Lowrider movement. These are the men that changed the way those of us in the low life both live and ride. The Hall of Fame began in 2005, honoring a lifestyle that has spanned decades. 50, 60 years of low riding. The stronger years, I'd say, it probably had to go back to the early 70s, and these guys were already there and they were doing they were doing their work and people watched and I want that and that's the color I want. I want my car to be that low and they're all a part of this. They've ruined all of us, you could say. Without a Lowrider Hall of Fame, uh, these great lowriders would never be recognized and we think it's about time and uh, that's the passion that we put behind this uh, induction ceremony every year. In that first year, three very special pioneers were chosen. Inducted in 2005, L. Larry Gonzalez received the first award for Lifetime Contributor. Larry was a pioneer. He was also a top promoter, a car show innovator, and a key player in the creation of Lowrider Magazine, all before anyone could envision the explosion of the movement. He goes way back, way, way back in the days when the little, the, the Lowrider icon with a hat, where all of that came from, everything. He inspires fellow Hall of Famers. L. Larry, oh, he's the, he's the man. He's the one that gave me my first start, L. Larry. When I first started the club in 92, he let me go to behind the scenes and see what it was all about, so I thank Larry for that. I don't think he gets enough credit for what he's done. He's very underrated. The leadership honor in 2005 went to Julio Ruelas, whose legacy lives on in the Deuce Car Club. Julio passed away in 2007, but before that, he and his brothers created and led the oldest existing lowrider club, now 29 chapters strong. Julio was more about showing a positive image so that we can gain respect. That's what he was about. And that's why he's greatly missed and well remembered. He also left a legacy of car collecting at its best. We all at one time owned 30, 40 cars. But when you're running a business like these guys, cars come and go. Julio kept his cars. You know, there's a difference. He was a true collector. Yeah, the little sticker in the window there, you know, uh, my uncle, the first president of the car club, passed away over a little, over a year and a half ago. And uh, that's the last time I drove this car was to the funeral. And I haven't driven it since, except for today. Coming up, a promoter from the Lone Star State. It's the heart of low riding. Without promoters, there wouldn't be any of this. Also, a patriarch makes it into the Hall of Fame. That's the number one thing my dad taught us, to do things right or don't do it. More of the greats are coming right up.
The 2006 Lifetime Contributor Award is a man who's turned promotion into absolute art form. He was honored for almost single-handedly giving life to the movement in one whopper of a state. Nick Hernandez received a lifetime achievement. Very well loved. His shows are the greatest shows you can ever go to out there. Texas, they've got the cars. We give Nick a ton of credit to keeping the sport alive in that Texas market. Uh, without uh, Nick, we truly believe that that sport might dwindle away. Nick knew one key fact. It's the heart of low running. Without promoters, there wouldn't be any of this. Mario de Alba received the Craftsman Honor in 2006. And if you ask any lowrider, Mario and the Hall of Fame were meant for each other. Welcome to the party. Mario's love of cars started long before he created a family of builders. I had a passion for cars since I was a kid. I always thought maybe one day, you know, I wish that I could learn to construct one of those cars and time went by, I kept at it. It was my dream. It was a dream that led to an absolute dynasty. They've been around for a long time. He's got the whole family working. He's got all the kids painting, and they're, they're innovators, all of them. I mean, they break out with a car, the next thing you know, it's this, it's that, it's this pattern. They do it all. They're pearls, down to the little kids with the pedal pushers, the wagons. They do it all because of that man. Dad's rules were, uh, he's gonna go to work, we had to go to work also. He showed me how to be a good man, you know, and be responsible. That's the number one thing my dad taught us, do things right or don't do it. I like all the cars, muscle cars, you know, race cars, anything that has got anything to do with cars. But my favorite is lawn riding, and I'll be a lawn rider for life. In 2006, the Leadership Honor Award went to Joe Ray, one of the most prominent symbols in low riding today. As both the editor of Lowrider Magazine and the top man in the Lifestyle Car Club, Joe Ray helped to bring recognition to these rolling works of art, becoming essential to those on the street who like driving them slow and insist on driving them low. Joe's been a uh, great uh, car club president. Joe's a leader um, day in and day out. I love cars, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna take me away. There ain't, there's not gonna be, uh, I'm on my second marriage now and, and that woman now knows what it's all about. And part of that lifestyle was all about creating rides like the Vegas car and Dress to Kill. I wanted to have authentic murals like some of the best vans did. So whatever the cost was or whatever the time, that's what I did. I thought, man, that's the baddest skeleton I've ever seen, so I have to have that on my trunk. Get ready for the top honorees of 2007. They're all coming up next. Coming up, a Hall of Famer who broke new ground. He's celebrating a little bit too much, but you know why he was celebrating? Because he went in there as a black guy. Also, the definition of dedication. He fell behind on, on house payments because of car shows, because he asked he's gonna put the money in the car. And lowrider paint is redefined. When I was growing up and remembering Gypsy Rose, it was too much for me.
2007 was a great year for the Lowrider Hall of Fame. Lowrider paint jobs changed forever when our next inductee asked his mother what she would paint on her 64 Chevy Impala. And the answer Jesse Valadez received from his mom? Well, it was the daring notion of painting flowers on a pink and red car. And my dad was a very big influence within the lowrider industry. Jesse showed lowriders that boundaries were gone. Owner of the world's most famous lowrider, Gypsy Rose, who came out in Chico and the Man, 1974, the year that I was born. And that was featured in the opening credits. After Gypsy Rose, new techniques became common. The name lowrider paint job, all the fades and the candies and the flakes. Like uh, the Gypsy Rose is probably the most famous car of having all the crazy paint job on it, you know, with all the like webbing style paint all down the side of it and the roses and all the pinstriping all over it. He wasn't afraid to um, put flowers on a car and he said that. With the car appearing weekly on Chico and the Man, the low riding community had a national symbol of pride. He made everybody a movie star. We're all proud to be low riders. I mean, we were breaking down, we had oil in our driveways, blowing up batteries, getting pulled over by the cops. But you know what? It's six o'clock tonight, we're on TV again. So he represented everybody. When I was growing up and remembering Gypsy Rose, it was too much for me. As a painter, it's like an artist, you know? He, he wrote his name on that car. And you could never duplicate that paint job. Not only did our next Hall of Famer found a club that celebrates the classics, but he's also never missed a car show in his long and distinguished career as an enthusiast. In short, Ricardo Alvarado is devoted. You know, I'm one of, maybe one of the only ones that have been around and I haven't quit. I've been going year after year to most of the shows. I haven't quit for over 30 years. And that devotion is one reason he's been elected president of the oldies for over three decades. They don't think I'm doing a good job. They can, whoever wants to step to the plate. They could. I'll, I'll become a member. Because it's a lot of responsibilities, right? Yes, it is. He had never missed a show since day one. He's been to every show. That's dedication. You know, I, I know he's missed a lot of family events because of it. Uh, you know, he fell behind on, on house payments because of car shows, because he asked, is going to put the money in the car. And all my years of shows, I've counted maybe four, five hundred. So what's he done? A thousand? You want to talk about dedication? It's dedication Ricardo proudly wears both on his hand and on his arm. Being elected into the Hall of Fame from thousands and thousands of guys, you know, it's a, it's a good feeling. It's called low riding, but this next 2007 inductee knew the art of making these rides a whole lot higher. One of the founders of the Professionals Car Club, hydraulics pioneer Ted Wells, was an innovator. Back when it took a lot of trial and error to figure out the ups and downs of radical suspension. Ted Wells, OG, mighty person, very knowledgeable, presto king. I was 13 years old, and this is like in 1967. And a guy came to my mother's house, and he pulled up in the driveway, and he just 